Hi, I'm Megan Powell from the Essex Bridge Center, and this video is the second in a series of three videos to explain how duplicate scoring works, whether you play online or whether you play in a live bridge club. Now, we've already walked through one video together, uh, and this is the second video in our series. So let's get started. The topic of this video is taking our raw scores and converting them into match points so that we can have a level view of all of the boards we play in a game, and then to determine our final score. So as I said, this is the second of three videos. We've already walked through one series together where we discussed how to calculate a raw score at the end of a hand that you play. Now, if you have not seen that video yet, I strongly suggest that you stop this video and go to our website, EssexBridgeCenter.com, find that first video. And here's how you do that. On our website, scroll down, find the orange box that is marked helpful videos and downloads, click on the icon in the middle of that box, and then on the next screen, you will find a section that's on scoring. There will be a scoring one video and a handout that goes with it, all right? You will also be able to go to that same place at our website to view this video and the associated handout that goes with it. So let's assume that you have seen the first video in which we discussed how to calculate a raw score when you finish playing a hand. Now we're moving on to the next set of steps. What we want to do is take those raw scores from our that we calculated in our first video, and we want to convert them to something called match points. Now, raw scores are not the final scoring result on any given board, all right? Raw scores are the initial um, identification of your outcome, the initial result that you get on a board. But then we're going to convert every raw score into something called, um, called match points. Why do we need to convert raw scores to match points? Well, there are several reasons. Match pointing, first of all, levels the playing field across an entire game. So let's just say that we only used your raw scores at the end of a hand and we added them up. And let's say you were playing in a game that had 15 boards in it, right? You and your partner are seated at a table. You're going to play 15 total boards in this game. Well, if we only used raw scores, you could have a raw score that had... 1,430 points on one board. And on the next board, you could have 680 points. And on the next board, you could have 980 points. Well, if you're adding up 15 of those, we could end up in the thousands and it could just becomes very cumbersome to add up. Now, the truth is the computer will do this for you. But in the old days, we used to have to do it by hand. And that could take some time if you were using these really large numbers. So the first reason is that we needed to find a way to make the scoring just a little more manageable. Another reason why we do this conversion to match points. What if on board one, you're sitting at a table and, you're, um, and you and your partner just happen to hit the right spot. You bid and you play a slam hand that's worth 1,430 points. Fantastic. And then you play a second board and you get a similar score. Let's say you get another 1,430 points. Well, all of a sudden, your partnership in raw score only is now up near 3,000 points if we used a cumulative score. Now, what if other tables playing those same first two boards never got anywhere near that score? They just didn't bid the same and they didn't perhaps play the same. And maybe they only got a score of 600 points on each of those boards. You have closing in on 3,000 points on those two boards, and the other tables are closing in on 1,200. That's an enormous gap if all we used were your raw scores and we added them up during the course of a game. What if those other tables could never, ever catch up to you? That would not make the game very fair. Some people might say, well, the game was over on the first two boards, but that's not what bridge is about. This is supposed to be a fair game from beginning to end. And the only way that it could be fair is if you somehow leveled the playing field during the process. So there must be a way for every partnership 
to have even footing every time a new hand starts. Every time a new board is, is, is received and you look at your cards, it should be a new beginning for each partnership. Another reason, and this is more true in a live bridge club than it is online. When you're playing in a live bridge club, depending on the number of tables in the room, it is possible that your table will not play every single board that is in play. Sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. So you should not be penalized if you never got to see a board in which you might have earned 1,430 points. What if it never came to your table? Well, that's not really fair. If those tables over there got to bid and play and earn 1,430 points on that board, but it never came as far as your table in a live bridge club, well, that wouldn't be fair. So you're really only compared against the other tables who play exactly the same boards you play. You are never even considered on the boards you never got. So if you didn't play a particular board, it can't hurt you. All right. So the whole concept of converting your raw scores to match points is so that every board is treated as an individual outcome and that every board is a chance for everybody to start at a bottom kind of uh, baseline on every single board. So it's a matter of how we level the playing field. Every board has a raw score at the end and then it can, gets converted into a match point score. So how does this work on page three of your packet? Well, we're going to boil down your raw score to a position on that board. And the higher your raw score, the higher your placement on that board. Now, let's just say in our scenario for this lesson, you have seven tables in your digital room or your live room. There are seven bridge tables. There are four people to a table, seven tables. And let's say that you play a board do you have just enough boards that everybody's going to play every board? So that means that if you have seven tables and you're going to play each board, a board will be played seven times during the course of the game, right? The match point position is based on how many other pairs you can beat on that board. Now, let me narrow that down a little more for you. You and I are north-south at, at, a, at a table, okay? You and I are north-south at table one. Our real competitors are every other north-south. We are going to be compared against how every other north-south play each board that we play. All the north-souths are going to see the exact same cards each time they play a board. And so, therefore, your job is to do better than every other north-south on that board. So if a board is played seven times and you could beat six other north-south pairs, the way that we view the match point conversion is this. It becomes a, it starts with whole numbers. If you can beat six other tables, then the top match point score in a seven table game would be a six. If you can beat six other tables, that's the top. Six, and then it moves down in, mat in the match point scores from that top number, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So there are seven match point whole scores in a seven table game. In other words, if a board is played seven times, the highest match point score converted that you can convert your raw score to is a six because you can beat six other tables on that board. So let's say there are seven tables in the game. And board 10 is played at seven tables, seven times. If you bid and play better than the other north Souths on board 10, then you and your partner will get a converted score to a six on board 10. Now, let's say that board 10 at our table, we just, we just hit the right place and we bid a small slam, six hearts. Yay. And we took 12 tricks. That's called making six, right? Six above book. So that's a small slam. We bid six hearts. We made six, six above book. That's 12 tricks. And we're vulnerable. The score for that is 1,430 points. That would be our raw score. 
Now let's say the other six tables, remember there are seven tables in this game. The other six tables did not bid six hearts. Maybe they bid four hearts. Maybe they even took 12 tricks, but they didn't bid a small slam. They didn't bid six. If that's the case, they would have only gotten a raw score of maybe 620 points or 640 or 680. But we got 1430. We bid and played better than the other six tables. Our raw score of 1430 points, because it was the highest raw score, and because we beat six other tables, we convert that raw score to a six on this board. We performed better than six other tables who played this board 10. Now, as a comparison here, just so you understand really how this works, suppose at another point in the game, we played board seven together, you and I, and we bid three spades. And that was a pretty decent uh, contract on this board. We bid three spades. We took nine total tricks. That's making three, isn't it? Three above book. When we bid and make three spades, our raw score will be 140 points. That's the raw score for bidding three spades and making three. And let's say the other six tables didn't quite go that far. Maybe they bid two spades and they took their eight necessary tricks. They bid two and they made two. If all the other tables did that, they earned a positive score of 110 points, but our 140 is better than all the other tables when they earned 110. We bid and played better than the other six tables. Our raw score is converted because it's the highest raw score. It gets converted to a six in this seven table game. We performed better than six other tables. We get a six in match points on this board. So in this way, it doesn't matter whether you're the high raw score is 1,430 points or if the high raw score is 140 points. Whichever pair receives the highest raw score earns the highest placement in match points. So if 1,430 was the highest raw score on that board, they get converted to a six. If 140 is the highest uh, raw score on another board, it gets converted to a six. Same outcome. It kind of levels things down and makes the gap between the partnerships smaller. Now, remember, this is a seven table game that I'm referring to. The highest match point score would be a six because you can beat six other pairs. If this were a nine table game, you would be able to beat eight other pairs. So the high match point score in a nine table game would be an eight. That would be the highest match point you could earn on a board. Suppose this were a five table game. Well, you could beat four other tables. You can never beat your own table, right? You're not beating up you and your partner. So you can beat four other tables. The high match point score on a five table game would therefore be a four. So it's how many other pairs you can beat on the board. On the bottom of page three, here's a slightly more straightforward way of looking at this. And I think it's easier in practice than it is in theory. When you compare your raw score against the other raw scores in your same direction only. So if you're north-south, you're comparing against other north-souths. If you're east-west, you're comparing against other east-wests. For every pair in your direction you beat in the raw score, you earn one match point. For every pair in your direction whose raw score you tie, you earn one half of a match point. So let's see if we can see this in practice and walk through this together. Now you have in your packet several boards with blanks, and I'm gonna look on page four on board four. And in our last class, we did the raw scoring on board four together. Now what we wanna do is we wanna convert those raw scores to match points. We want to take the raw scoring, and so it doesn't become hundreds of num uh, hundreds of des uh, of uh, of numerical places. We want to narrow this down to a smaller scale, and that's what match pointing is. So we're going to look at the north south pairs first, and for every north south pair that that uh, that you beat, you earn one match point. For every north south pair you tie, you earn a half of a match point. So let's walk through some of these together, and I'm going to start up here with line one. Pair one, north-south pair one, that's Daffy and Bugs. 
And I'm going to come over here and look at their north-south raw score column, okay? And on their north-south raw score column, on line one, Daffy and Bug, Bugs earned a positive 140. So what we're looking for is every pair they beat and every pair they tied. And if I come down to the very next line, you can see that we tied Harry Potter and Ron Weasley, didn't we? So that's a tie. We would earn one half of a match point for that. Now, did we beat positive 100? Well, yes, a positive 140 is higher than a, one, one, a positive 100. I want you to think of your fifth grade number line, right? Zero in the middle, positive numbers on the right, negative numbers on the left. If you look at the number line, your positive 140 up here, Daffy and Bugs, is better than a positive 100. So you're going to earn one match point for that. Now let's look at the next line, north-south only. A positive 200, well, no, we didn't beat them. Positive 200 is bigger than our positive 140. So no, we didn't beat them. But now the rest of the north-south column is negative numbers. And your positive 140 will always beat negative numbers. So you beat Hepburn and Tracy, they have a negative 130. You beat Charlie Brown and Snoopy, they have a negative 100. You beat Fred and Barney, they have a negative 300. So you beat four other north-south pairs and you did tie one north-south pair. So you get four match points for the people you beat, you get a half a match point for the pair that you tied. And so north-south line one, Daffy and Bugs gets 4.50 you could just make it 4.5. I like two decimal places. 4.50 in match points. So far, so good. Now we're going to keep moving down the north-south raw score column. And we're going to move down to the next line to Harry and Ron. But you know what? Harry and Ron did exactly the same thing that Daffy and Bugs did. They had the exact same raw score. So they tied Daffy and Bugs up top and then they beat these other four pairs. It's exactly the same match point score, 4.5. They beat four other pairs, they tied one pair. So far, so good. All right, let's go down to the third line. This is Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. They have a positive 100. So how many other pairs did they beat? Well, they did not beat line one. They did not beat line two. So those positive scores are higher than Vader and Skywalker's positive 100. So they didn't beat them. They also did not beat the next line, positive 200. So while Vader and Skywalker have a positive 100 and it is a positive score, it is the lowest of the positive scores, right? They didn't beat anybody else in the north-south column with a positive score. But they do beat all of the negative scores in the north-south column. So they beat Hepburn and Tracy. They beat Charlie Brown and Snoopy. They beat Fred and Barney. They beat three other north-south pairs in the raw scoring. They get three match points. They didn't tie anybody. They get 3.00 in the match pointing. All right, let's come down to Captain America and the Hulk down on the next line. They're the next north-south pair. They earned a positive 200. So who did they beat? All right, well, they beat line one because 200 is better than 140. They beat line two, 200 is better than 140. They beat line three, a plus 200 is better than a plus 100. And then, and of course we skip them, you can't beat up on yourself. Then they actually, then they, they also beat all the negative numbers, right? It looks like they beat six other North South pairs in the raw score. They have the highest, the best raw score. They had the highest positive number. So Captain America and the Hulk beat six other players. They didn't tie anybody. They get a 6.00. And notice that is the top match point score. We said in a seven table game, and this is what you're looking at on the chart is seven, seven lines, right? Seven tables. In a seven table game, you can't beat up on yourself, but you can beat the other six tables. So that's what Captain America and the Hulk did. They got the best um, raw score in the north-south direction. They beat six other pairs. They get a 6.00. They get a top, what we refer to as a top on this particular board. Now notice that the top raw score is only 200 points. It's not one of those fancy 600 or 900 or 1,430 point hands. Doesn't have to be a big 
raw score. It just has to be the highest one in the group. Okay, so now we're going to move our way down. Let's go look at Hepburn and Tracy. Now, this is the beginning of the negative scores in the north-south column. This is the first time we encounter one. You're still going to get a match point score, even though you got a negative score. The idea is, who else did you beat? Now, I want you to remember the number line again. Zero in the middle, positive numbers on the right, negative numbers on the left. When you have a negative score, it doesn't mean you did the worst. Your job, if you do get a negative score, is to get a negative score as close to zero as possible. So Hepburn and Tracy have a negative 130 here. They look to see who they beat. Well, they certainly did not beat anybody with a positive score above them, right? Okay. Did they beat minus 100 for Charlie Brown and Snoopy? And the answer is no, because a negative 100 is closer to zero on the number line than negative 130 is. Right? As we move closer to zero, the numbers get smaller. So negative 100 did not beat, uh, negative 130 did not beat Charlie Brown and Snoopy's negative 100. But it does beat Fred and Barney's negative 300. Right? So Hepburn and Tracy with their negative 130 did not tie anybody, but they did beat one other pair. And they do get one match point for their effort. All right? Let's go look at Charlie Brown and Snoopy with their negative 100. Well, their negative 100 did not beat any of the positive scores up top in the north-south column. All right, so those are out. Negative 100 does, though, beat a negative 130 by Hepburn and Tracy. Negative 100 is a better negative score. It's closer to zero, so they beat that pair. They also beat Fred and Barney because negative 100 is better than negative 300. So they beat two other pairs. They earned two match points. They tied nobody. They earned two match points. And so our final look here then is at the bottom. How about at the all the way at the bottom? Fred and Barney. Well, Fred and Barney didn't beat anybody with their negative 300. They beat nobody. Everybody else above them has a better score. They didn't tie anybody. So they're getting zero match points. So we've just match pointed the north-south column. This is how the north-south raw scores get converted to a more manageable, more level playing field. Notice the gap is not so big. A negative 300 versus a, a positive 200. Those are the two extremes in, in the raw points. But it's only a six-point gap between a zero and a six. But Fred and Barney did get a bottom in, among the north-souths on this board. Now, what about the East-West pairs? They get scores as well. That We've already given them raw scores, and we convert their match points. So let me do a couple of those with you here. Let's see how you do. Um, and you can see the whole list here uh, when I'm done. So let's take a look here. We're going to look at the East-West column of raw scores, right? Raw scores under the East-West column. And the first one we look at is Mickey and Goofy on line one, East-West pair seven. They earned a negative 140. Now, again, just because you got a negative number doesn't mean you did poorly. It means you have to beat other people. Other people have to have a higher negative or a worse negative score than you have. So let's see how that goes. With Mickey and Goofy's negative 140, well, they tied Granger and Weasley. All right. So they got that's a tie. They're going to get a half a match point for that. Did they beat a negative 100 by Obi-Wan and R2-D2? No. They didn't beat them. Negative 100 is better. Did they beat negative 200? Well, yes, they beat them because Mickey and Goofy's negative 140 is better than a negative 200. All right. Did they beat any, any of the positive numbers? No. Your negative 140, Mickey and Goofy, up here on line one, do not beat any of the positive numbers. Negatives don't be positives. So you beat one other pair here, Thor and Iron Man. Um, and you tied Granger and Weasley up here. So you beat one pair, you tied one pair, you get a 1.5. Now, something I'd like you to notice, when we do the match pointing in the north-south column and then we do it in the east-west column, on the same line, those two numbers in match points should add up to the top possible match point score on the board. 4.5 and 1.5 do in fact add up to six. 
So when you add them next to each other in the north-south column and the east-west column, they should add up to six. Let's see if that works for us here. Well, we know that Hermione Granger and Ginny Weasley on line two, east-west five, got the exact same match points as Mickey and Goofy did on line one because it's the same score. They all got the same raw score, okay? What about the third line? Obi-Wan and R2-D2. Well, they beat three other pairs. Who did they beat? They have a negative 100. They can beat the other negative numbers that are bigger. So they beat three other pairs. They don't beat anybody with a positive number, right? And so if they beat three other pairs, they didn't tie anybody, they get a 3.0 as well. Notice those two numbers equal the six, the top match point score. Now I want you to finish the east-west column without me. I want you to pause the video. And when you finish the east-west column, come on back and I'll show you the answers. Okay, did you finish the east-west column? Here's what the answers are for those. Check, take a look and check against your work. So notice, as you look at them side by side, they do equal six. And whoever got the, the lowest Northwest score means that their East-West counterpart got the highest. Same thing here. This North-South got the highest match point score. Their counterpart East-West was going to get the lowest one. Now, when you look at this and you see that Wilma and Betty down here got the highest match point score for East-West, right? They had the highest raw score in the East-West column. When it was converted, they got the highest match point score, a six. And Wilma and Betty were not even declarer on this hand. Fred and Barney were the declarer. Something went terribly wrong in their contract and they handed Wilma and Betty a big score. Sometimes you're not even the declarer and you get a positive, good, good positive score. But if Wilma and Betty had earned a positive 1,000 on this board, it wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have changed their match point score. They would have had the highest raw score with plus 1,000. It just still would have gotten them a six in the match points. The highest raw score gives you the highest match point score. And it is a way to level the playing field. So the gap between partnerships doesn't explode. The most you can be away from the lowest player on any given board is six match points. Okay, let's look at one more packet together, one more board together in your packet, and that's board 12. Now, on board 12, I would like you to match point this without me. Right? I want you to pause um, the video and look on page seven in your packet. You have a blank for board 12. I want you to do all the match pointing. First, the north south column. Look at the north south raw scores match pointed in the north-south match point column, then look at the east-west scores, and then do the match pointing in the east-west column. Pause the video now, do all that work, and then come back. Okay, how did you do? Let's see how you did. Because I think if you look at the first line here, north-south plus 600, who did they beat? Well, they did not beat a plus 650 right below them, right? So they didn't beat them. They certainly beat a negative number. So they beat that pair. Did they beat a positive 620? No, 620 is higher than 600. Did they beat a 600? No, that's a tie. So now they've beat this negative pair here. They've tied this other 600 pair here, but they did not beat two higher positive numbers. So what did they earn on this hand? They earned 1.5. They earned a one match point for beating a pair and a half a match point for tying a pair. How about the next line? This north-south, Hepburn and Tracy earned a plus 650. Well, they certainly beat the first pair. They beat the negative number, negative 100. A 650 beats 620, 600, but it doesn't beat down here. It ties the other 650. So I think that Hepburn and Tracy beat line one, I think they beat line three, I think they beat line four, I think they beat line five. They tied line six, so I think they get 4.50. How'd you do? Does that logic work out for you? Now let's check the rest of your north-south column. Does yours look like mine? 
because these are the correct match pointing for the north souths on board 12. Let's go do the east west. We'll do a couple together and then I'll show you the rest. Here we go. Uh, Hermione Granger and Ginny Weasley on the first line are east west pair five. They earned a negative 600 in the raw score in the east west column. Well, who did they beat? Well, they beat the higher negative number, right? The lower negative number is a better score. They beat Thor and Iron Man. They did not beat Mickey and Goofy. They did not beat somebody with a positive number. Negative 600 beats negative 620. It ties the other negative 600 and it beats the last two. So let's think about this. Who did Granger and Weasley beat? They beat line twos, 650. They beat line fours, 620. They tied Lucy and Linus on, on line five. They beat line six and seven. So I think they beat four pairs and tied one. They should get a, a 4.50. And if you notice, if you add those together, that should give you your top match point score of six. How about line two, Thor and Iron Man? That negative 650, who did they beat? Well, that's such a high negative number. They're only going to beat somebody who's higher. And that's down here. That's all the way down here, Obi-Wan and R2-D2. The negative 680 is the only number higher than this negative 650. But they, there is another 650. So Thor and Iron Man beat one pair and tied another. They get a 1.450. Notice those two numbers equal six. Now let's look at the rest of the column. Is that, is that something you did? Do those look right to you? Because that's what I got. Now you have three other boards in your packet on pages 10, 11, and 12. What I will tell you is to pause the video here. And I think you should match point those three boards. It's, it's good practice, even though the computer does all this work for you. It's good for you to understand the process. It will make other parts of this lesson and next week's lesson more understandable. So you should pause the video, go and match point the other three boards, boards one, three, and eight. Go into the match pointing on them. You have the answers in your packet. Check the answers. See if you've gotten them correct or not. You can always email me if you're confused about something. When you finish all that match pointing work, then you're going to come back to me in this video and turn your packet to page 19, and we will finish out this process. Okay, if you're back with me now, I assume it's because you went ahead and did the match pointing on boards one, three, and eight. So we've done some practice with the match pointing, but now we want to take all of that work to some kind of conclusion for today's lesson. On page 19 in your packet, what you're going, what we want to talk about is once the game is completely done, we want to figure out how well we performed. When you finish playing an individual hand, it earns a raw score. At the end of the game, the raw scores on each board are then match pointed like we just did. So we wait till the end of the game for the match pointing part to be done on every board because you have to be compared to every other north south, let's say. And that only happens when everybody has finished playing the hands. So at the end, immediately after a board is done at your table, it gets a raw score. When all of the tables have finished all of the boards, then each board is viewed individually so that it can get match pointed the way we just did. Now, once all the match pointing is, is done, we need to take those match pointed scores and determine a total score for you. We want to determine just how well you performed in the game. And along those lines, what we do is calculate a percentage for your game. So how does this work? We add up all of your match point scores, your total match point score is then divided by something called the total possible match point score. And that gives you your percentage for the game. What do I mean by that? What is total possible match point score? We said we were in a seven table game, right? I also said earlier that there were 15 boards in play. 
our seven tables had to play a total of 15 boards. The total possible match point score is determined by taking the number of times a board is played, and a board is played seven times if we have seven tables, we multiply it by whatever the highest possible match point score could have been on the board. And then we come up with total possible match point score. So for instance, we said that because we had a seven table game and we could beat six other tables on any given board, that the top match point score on any given board was a six, right? We could beat six other tables. So the highest match point score on any given board is a six. There are 15 boards in play. So six times 15, if you would get a 90 for the highest possible match point score. What do I mean by that? I mean that if you played 15 boards and you earned a six on every single board, you would get a total score in match points of 90. Now that is never gonna happen. I promise you that's never gonna happen. It's not possible for you to earn the highest raw score and therefore the highest match point score of six on every one of the 15 boards in our seven table game just isn't gonna happen. But you will earn some amount on every board and you wanna compare it against that total possible of 90. So let's say that you and your partner are North South pair one, that's Daffy, Duck and Bugs Bunny in our game. And you and, you and your partner played 15 boards, right? And each board earned a raw score. And at the end of the game, each of those boards was converted to a match point score. Now, here on page 20 is the list of your match points on each board. Take a, taking a good look at this, notice that on board one, you and your partner earned a six. You got the highest board. You got a top board on board one. Yeah, you started out strong. But somewhere as it goes along, it doesn't always come out that way, right? By the time we got to board seven, you earned a zero on the board. Somehow you earned the worst possible score on board seven. I don't know what happened. I don't have the board in front of me. I'm only looking at your results. These are all the places where your raw scores were converted to match point scores. In fact, as we get down to the bottom, I'm gonna guess you got tired, right? Take a look at your last bunch of boards. 15, the final board is a zero for you. A two is not so hot. Remember the highest is a six? 1.5, you know, it happens. It happens. Now, if I asked you to add up all of your match point scores here and you pause the video and you do that, did you get 53 for your total score? Okay. So once again, what are these numbers? You played board one. You earned a raw score. Maybe it was positive 620. Maybe it was positive 1430. It doesn't matter. But I can tell because you got a six match points that here's what happened at the end of the game. Everybody who played board one, all seven tables were compared against each other. Match points were awarded based on the raw scores. You and your partner must have gotten the highest raw score because you earned a six. That was the total highest possible match point score for these 15 boards in our seven table game. So each of your boards at the end of the game had its raw score converted to one of these match point scores. Now you add up all of your match point scores in all 15 boards and we came up with a 53. So for the entire game, your total score is a 53. The total possible match point score was a 90, and we got that from a high of six on every given board times 15 boards. The total possible match point scores would be 90, but we never get 90. But then what we do is we want to take the 53, we want to divide it by the total possible 90, and we get our percentage, and our percentage is 58.88888. We could just round it to 59%. So is 59% a good score? Well. This is not like fifth grade. If you got a 59% on a test, that would not be so hot, right? But in bridge, it doesn't work quite that way. It's more of a bell curve kind of a thing. You are not going to earn 100% in a game. Not, don't even think about it. It doesn't happen. Again, you would have to get a match point score of six on all 15 boards. You would have to have gotten that highest possible score of 90. Never going to happen. Never. So you're not going to get a 90, 100% game. 
honestly, you're not even going to get a 90% game. Doesn't really happen. Doesn't happen. 80% games are rare. They do occasionally happen, but they're rare. 70 point, uh, 70% games do happen. Uh, they're special. They should be celebrated. Uh, if you are a member of the ACBL and you get the monthly magazine, there is a section in the magazine every month that applauds those players who get 70% games. They happen occasionally. They are not happening constantly. They just don't. What's more likely, if you have a successful game, you consider it successful because you got somewhere above 50%. 50 to 65% is a decent game. 60% or above is a very nice game, a very good game. 50 to 60% is a very decent game. You want to earn at least 50% in the game. You had an average game, but average in bridge is pretty darn good. It really is. You had your head's above water completely. You can go into shop right with your head held high. So if you have above 50%, you had a very decent game of bridge. 58% or if we want to round it to 59, is a really nice game. So I would say that on this game, you and your partner did really well. Now, one of the things you're going to be able to do is to go back into BBO if you played in BBO and look at your actual game board by board to see how you did on each individual hand compared to other people. All right. When you play in a BBO game or a live game, you see your total percentage for the game. You really want it to be higher than 50%. And like I said, if you play in a BBO game, you can go back into BBO and take a look at your entire game hand by hand. You can even replay your hands in BBO. If you play in a live in-person game, at the end of the game, if you stick around, the director can give you a summary of how well you did. There's a way to do that in live games. So, what we've done in this lesson is we've taken the raw scores we started with in our first lesson. We converted them to something called match points to make the, um, the result assessment far more fair and far more accessible for us to put together. From that, we were able to figure out our total score for a game, which we then convert to a percentage. And that percentage really tells us how well we did on that game but we're not quite finished. We still have another piece we have to put together. And that's our next lesson that's coming up. How did you really do when you compare against other players? Because you earn placement awards in a, in a sanctioned game. In your direction, whether you're North, South, or whether you're East, West, you can come in first, second, third. In fact, you can come in first without ever having been declarer the entire game. If you were on defense the entire game and you played good defense and you got some positive scores because you stopped declarer from making the, his contract, you could place first in your direction. You don't ever have to be declarer, really. It's what you do with the cards you have. So both sides, North, South, and East, West, will have placement awards first, second, third in a game. If you are a member of the ACBL, you'll, you'll be earning ACBL master points, which are not match points. They're different things. A master point award, which is kind of like an assessment of how you are doing as a player. It's a little bit like a golf handicap. And uh, next week, we'll, in our next lesson, we'll show you how that works. Um, it's also a way for you to start looking over more than one game about how well you're doing as a player. There will be something called stratification that we have to discuss. What does that mean? What does it mean when you see a game broken down into different segments? And what does it mean to you? So there's still just a little bit more work we want to do. We want to pull in some aspects of what you see into BBO, from BBO into this, and that'll be our final lesson. So um, if you need to, please go back and look at this video again. There's the handout that I'm hoping you downloaded to use to go along with this. All right. Um, if you have questions about the pieces that are in this particular video and this handout, please send me a note. I'm happy to answer them. And let's get ready for the final video that's coming up next in the series. All right. I'll see you soon. Bye now.